All right, everyone, we are going once more. Now, first run was on Pokemon Red. Pokemon Red because it is slightly faster than Blue when you're doing the save corruption runs. Then we did Pokemon Blue, no save corruption. Likewise, same. Slightly faster than Red when you're doing the no save corruption runs. And then third, here, we are seeing Pokemon Blue used for the glitchless run. Now, theoretically, Red would be slightly faster, but I tasked both Red and Blue up to the point where you get Nidoran, and just by complete happenstance, the blue one lined up a little bit faster for getting our starter Nidoran. Those of you who are familiar with glitchless speedrunning will know, for one, we're going to use single character names here instead of the glitched names we used in the previous tasses. And, oh, that there was setting options. So we need to make sure our options are set up in a very, very specific way. And we needed to go through the beginning of the game. Now, in the previous runs, we didn't see the same sort of option set because the game, the run was so short, we could just hold a button through all the text to make it go the fastest speed. But in this one, we need the text to be by default going the fastest speed so that we can use text and mashing during text as a way of causing microscopic cycle delays to get different RNG. Are you saying the RNG is cycle-based in here? Yes. The reason that these tasses uh, can be played back on console is that they rely on RNG from a basically a cycle counter in the CPU. And so if you start the CPU from the same point, like t from power off every time, it will always be in the same place and you'll always get the same RNG. So that's how we're going to see all these battles play out exactly like the task wants them to. That is amazing. And you're going to see right here the Bulbasaur and Squirtle fight. We went with Squirtle because we need to get through Brock, unlike the save corruption and no save corruption tasks that never even made it to Brock. And we can repeatedly manipulate Bulbasaur's growl to fail, while we also get two tackle 1 in 39 crits and one non-crit 1 in 39. It is extremely rare. It is one of the most uh, specific fights that you could have in the game, uh, one in like several billions. Um, nobody has ever had that exact fight with the growl fails from the opponent in RTA. One person, uh, at least one person, has had the perfect fight from like your side where you get tackle and then three turns, or sorry, uh, t t tail whip and then three turns of tackling. Now we get to manipulate away encounters on the Route 1 grass, just like in NSC, and get our parcel, and we will be back and ready to go. Yeah, I often call casual poke players CPP or C++ for short. Oh, and another great little uh, thing to note is in the upper left of the game screen, as we're walking down here, you'll see a button being held, and that is the input viewer, the GBI Game Boy interface, the s replacement for the Game Boy Player startup disc that we use to do these task playbacks, uh, has a input viewer. So you can, you can actually see every input live that we're sending to the GameCube console. And actually, I can give you a little uh, a little tour here of what's going on with my camera. Now that we're into one of the deeper runs, I'll just pull the camera around here. You can see some of my production setup, but there's the GameCube right there, and you can see there's a little SD card adapter in there, and the inputs are being read live. I can actually take this controller out here. I could take it right out from the slot, and it would still keep playing because the inputs are not coming from the controller slot. They're coming from the SD card. And then you can see the blue cartridge the red cartridge, the yellow cartridge. And now we are back in Viridian City.
We got our Pokeballs, and now we should be able to go get our level 3 Nidoran. Level 3 Nidoran, very important here, because if we get a level 4 Nidoran, you get too much experience on Brock. It's not like the RTA run exactly. If you get a level 4 Nidoran, that works great in the RTA run, because you get experience half from Geodude and half from Onyx. But the way we're going to fight Brock here is very different from the... RTA fight. <laughs> CPV with a little extra tech there. And another great bit, so anybody watching, a lot of people here watching might be speedrunners. A lot of speedrunners on the Game Boy platform use Game Boy Interface. So if anybody here uses Game Boy Interface speedrun or Game Boy Interface high fidelity, you can use those Game Boy interface just like you would to play the games for tasking. That's what I, all, it's all I'm doing right now is I'm using a copy of Game Boy interface just pointed at a file with a list of inputs to play back. And now here in the forest, you're going to see a manipulation for a very specific encounter. It is a Pikachu, because we need to get experience onto Squirtle. So we just have a little bit extra experience going into Brock, and we also need to get into Red Bar. Just like we talked about with NSC. We need to get into Red Bar to save time in battles. And now that we have Red Bar, we can go to the the last fight, the, the fight that we went Trainer Fly off of in NSC. We are not going to need to Trainer Fly here. Instead, we are going to go straight into tackling, and these tackles are incredibly precise here. We need to hit four 1 in 39 crit tackles in a row. And there we go. We have beat the Weedle Trainer in the forest, and we can go on to Brock. But one thing more before Brock is we need a flyer. And we have a Pidgey now. That Pidgey is really important in the task because we need to be able to uh, save time over a Spearow. Actually, uh, the old task of Pokemon Blue Glitch List got a Doduo out by the Mart, the Celadon Mart, but it is faster instead to get the Pidgey earlier here before Brock even. Jerry is very tiny right now for some reason. Now this is one of the great key fights of the glitchless tasks. We do this screech fail from Onyx, hit a bubble for Onyx down to one, and then we let Squirtle die to Onyx. So now all of Onyx, Onyx's experience will go on to Nitto, and we can use Onyx to get Nitto into red bars. Now both Squirtle and Nitto have been manipulated into red bar at certain points in the run. Nitto goes all the way up from three to eight on the Onyx, gets Horn Attack, and that's why we can't get the level 4 Nidoran, because if we go all the way from uh, 3, we can go from 3 to 8 from Onyx, but if you start with a 4, you go too far, and you go to level 9. 
Frey, I gotta take care of, of the pupper a second here. He's been a little bit too whiny, so if you could do a donation read or two while we get onto the Route 3 fights, that would be awesome. We have a $5 donation from Anonymous, with no comment. Thank you so much. And this is just a reminder that all donations during this event, all subs and bits, will be going to the National Alliance and don't know. Excellent, excellent charity. And we have some awesome upcoming incentives. There is a donation incentive to see TI Kevin 83's dog Jerry, which is which is um $183 short. There's a file name for the Zelda 1 Metroid 1 combo rando. And there's we are need six hundred and eighty more dollars to see the Legend of Zelda Swordless Task. So get your donations in for these awesome, awesome incentives. Nami, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, envisions a world where all people affected by mental illness live healthy, fulfilling lives supported by a community that cares. They provide advocacy, education, support, and public awareness to all individuals and families affected by mental illness lives. Thanks for it. So here we are again using a specific combination of moves to get through all the fights just as fast as possible. We're using tons of horn attacks and also staying really low HP to stay in that red bar. And now we have the Short Sky fight. Short Sky fight is really awesome in TAS here. In RTA, you have to heal up a ton and worry about uh, getting wrapped infinitely by Eminem, Ekans the Rap God. And uh, you have to worry about quick attacks from Rotata, but we can just get Tail Whip fails and Leer fails and all that stuff, and really, really got nothing to worry about from Short Sky. And on to the bug catcher. So we got four fights here on bug catcher. We got the Weedle, which we should be able to take out with a single horn attack crit. Kakuna. We're going to tackle that first so that the tackle can do additional damage on our first turn of the battle and then use horn attack crit. We, again, we got to minimize uh, our horn attack uses so that we don't run out of them. I don't think I've mentioned that. I, I know we, I mentioned that we're using horn attack a lot to maximize damage, but we also need to minimize it to not have too few of them left by the end of Mount Moon. So we're doing these specific series of tackling and then horn attacking back and forth. And now to the last fight of Route 3. Another standard fare here. Horn attack. Get some more red bar. Horn attack again. And now this one, we're not able to go into that tackling first, so we just keep spamming the horn attacks and crit on turn two. And now we are through Route 3. And where a human run would be nearing the... 18 minute mark usually maybe 17 minute mark the task here is closer back to the 13 minute mark it's uh it's really starting to open up a gap with the human run by this point because the human uh strategies involve the rta strategies involve so many saving quit manipulations and they have to deal with so many random encounters through this point even though they're trying to manipulate them away
Larson, uh, a lot of the cries in Gen 1 Pokemon are using the same sound effects, but just uh, distorted with different effects, either stretched, shortened, or reversed. So tons of them sound very, very similar if you uh, think about it at all. You might be uh, still a little bit confused how we're not getting any encounters. And FFX Faith right in the chat, just as I, I was thinking. We're not getting any encounters because, we, we, for one, we're tassing, so we're able to manipulate everything that's going on. But the way that we're manipulating the RNG is it's based off of a basically a counter of the number of clock cycles that the console has been on, and it's rotating that through the... Uh, Different, two different random number generator addresses constantly. So those addresses we can watch, and if we would get an encounter, we, we can either like walk a different path and cause a different number of CPU cycles, or we can uh, use an A press and cause two frames of lag, and then there'll be different cycles when the, when the encounter is checked, all just to cause different things to happen. And... Uh, so we're able to precisely predict how many uh, cycles the console has been on to every point in the walk path and manipulate that count so that we don't get an encounter. Now we're up to the super nerd. And look again, keeping that HP super low so we stay in red bar. Using Poison Sting, another great thing to mention here, just like an RTA, you want to use those moves that have shake animations as much as possible, as opposed to flash animations. Uh, the shake animation uh, is... Well, sorry, the shake side-to-side -side screen animation when you use a move is 60 frames faster than the one where it like, flickers the screen back and forth. And now we're finally getting Nidorino. This is live console playback, Larson. I, I uh, pointed my camera out around a minute ago and actually showed the console live where this feed is coming from. It's now a good time for a quick donation. Uh, yes. We have a $70 donation from Audrey Azura. Is it time to start a favorite Pokemon donation train? Here's $70 for my new favorite evolution, Sylveon. Thank you so much. Thanks, Audrey. That's awesome. Now here, whenever we do a task of a Pokemon speedrun, we find things in the middle of the task after like getting deeper in that we can't fix. These speedruns take like months and months of work to optimize. So you often can't get it all done and optimized in one pass. So I actually, there was an older pass of this run that was 18 seconds slower than the one you're seeing now. And this one still has one thing that is not quite optimal, uh, where we're going to go into Misty's gym and menu in there. If we instead menued at the transition between Mount Moon and uh, Cerulean City here, that there was like a little music transition you might have heard at that map connection. If we menued exactly at that map connection, the music transition would have overwritten a sound effect when you move Pokemon in your inventory or when you use a Moonstone. And either way, you, 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 we could use one of those sound effect removals to save 30 frames. Uh, you can see here the menu is being done inside of Misty's gym. There's a balance there because menuing outside is typically slower than menuing inside, but the effect of getting rid of that transition, the sound with the so sound effect with the transition is so good that it outweighs the problem of menuing outside versus inside. So that's something to look for if we ever go back and revisit this task again. Another fun fact about the Misty fight here is that this gym is slightly faster if we were to get instant text already, but we we can't really do that. Like. 
you'd, you'd love to have instant text for the Misty fight, but the Misty fight is so complicated to manipulate, you need to have that effect of being able to mash during text printing to get the RNG set up correctly and fast enough that you're actually saving time. Um, so we can't actually get instant text for Misty's gym. We go straight in, and it's not that big of a deal because it's only a couple of frames faster if you were to be able to get instant text. And manipulate it with the same effectiveness. Now this Misty fight is ridiculous. It's, it's so rare, it's not even funny. You, you need so many 1 in 39 or critical or Gen 1 miss events in a row. Like, here, uh, you need a very specific bubble beam hit to like an exact HP where you're going to be okay on the Nugget Bridge. You need it really low, but you also need it not too low so that you can take damage again quickly, because we're going to get a bunch of HP back after we beat the Starmie. And we also need Starmie's Water Gun. We need to need Starmie to use Water Gun, for one, because it's uh, fewer characters of text than Bubble Beam. And we need it to Gen 1 Miss, so that we get the Miss text and so that we don't die, right? <laughs> so that there's so many things going on. We need, we need also our horn attacks to do the maximum amount of damage and critical. So, uh, you might be hear me say one, and, and uh, yeah, I'm talking too fast now. You might hear me say one in 39 a lot. The one in 39 refers to the fact that any move in Gen 1 can do 85% to 100% of its maximum damage. And that 100% maximum damage is a one in 39 chance because that's just like what 15% of the bit range of 8-bit is. So if you do the 8-bit math, that's that that range is 39 of the bits wide so the that maximum 255 roll where it would be exactly 255 out of 255 100 percent of the damage is one in 39 of those uh possible rolls does any time get saved by holding b and using a to progress while in dialogues not while you're on the fastest tech speed and that's why we set the fastest tech speed manually at the beginning of the run because we need to be able to mash during dialogue to manipulate RNG. But you also just saw us go get instant text. We talked to the bike shop owner and then used B to exit out of the, the bike shop. They do that in the RTA speedrun as well. And that in, now we have this instant text glitch. <laughs> this is the glitchless run, right? But we still allow things like instant text in certain situations. And, and through that, we're still manipulating things like an exact damage poison sting on that Abra. That That is a 1 in 39 critical to get that one. There's about a 1 in 240 chance. And we're manipulating that despite the fact that we we can't use any delays other than full frame delays. Like, you can't mash during the text because there's no text printing. The text is just instant, at least instantly spawning at this point. And now we're on to the Nugget 1 trainer, and we have Bubble Beam. Bubble Beam we're using for the Shake animation. So now we have Instant Text, we have Red Bar, and we have a Shake animation move. These battles are going extremely quickly. C text from that guy there. It's so it's so fast. The youngster. Gonna see a couple more bubble beam uses here. And now we are on to the Mankey. This is a common fight to use to get Red Bar manipulated in the RTA speedrun. We already have Red Bar, so we just can go straight to get rid of it. Of 
And now we are at the end of Nugget Bridge. Control all cuteness, uh, you, you got a little bit off there because Harden is like one of the one moves that can't do that because hard, Harden doesn't have an accuracy check. But yeah. We, we heavily abuse the fact that things can Gen 1 miss in the tasks because it's great to be able to sit at low HP and just say the enemies move missed <laughs> and now also because the task was able to do misty before this section it can do this onyx fight and use ball beam on the onyx you can do that too in RTA, but you have to go get Water Gun explicitly to be able to kill the Onyx. You can see how powerful Bubble Beam is as a move in this situation, just because we're, we're still using it to kill things that are pretty similar in level to us and it's not there, there's no same type attack bonus it's not even that high power of a move but now we have thrash and we have lost instant x because anytime you have to go through a yes no dialogue that kills instant x but we do still have our red bar and it's not too bad because it's near the end of the way to Bill's house. There, there isn't any way for us to, uh... uh oh no. Oh no, Taters. T Taters sneaking in some more, uh... Some more trash talk here. About the Game Boy Player. The Game Boy Player... Little, little known fact. Actually has an entire Game Boy Advance in it. So, the manipulations you're seeing for RNG in this live playback from the GameCube and Game Boy Player are possible on the original Game Boy Advance and Game Boy Advance SP as well. Gotta go through the Bill cutscene here. But luckily, because we have Red Blue, we can escape rope after the Bill cutscene. And you're like, wait, escape rope? Usually you dig out. In, in the tasks, instead of ever having to teach dig, we buy escape ropes. We, we don't need to do anything else with our money. And it's a lot faster to buy escape ropes while we're in Pallet than it is to go teach dig to a Pokemon. The usual time a human speedrunner gets to Bill in blue. Um, is it like 35 minutes? I want to say it's like 35 minutes at the top end. Um, in the TAS, it's like 25 minutes. It's like, it's that far ahead already. It is, the TAS doesn't actually save very much time through the end. It's It saves like a huge, maybe like 70 to 80% of its time already. Because the early game is so volatile in, in uh, Pokemon speedruns. And you can see how useful Instant Text is because even though we lost it after getting uh, thrashed and going through the whole build cutscene, we went and immediately grabbed it back when we escape roped back to Cerulean. And we're going to carry it through uh, the SSN. I just want to say also, I'm so happy that 
over 400 of you guys have stuck around deep into the night here to keep watching the live Pokemon tassing on console. This is uh, this has been one of my dreams for a while to be able to do the whole Pokemon Gen 1 as a block of commentary. And uh, I'm really excited that you guys are all sticking around to watch through the night. Now here, here's a, an interesting section of the run. We got three Pidgeys. And usually, as a speed run, you thrash them. Now, what are we going to do? Now, we do thrash them. They're, it is faster to use Bubble Beam on these Pidgeys as a task, but in Pokemon Red Blue, you really, really need to preserve your Bubble Beams. Um, where I think we may even be out uh, soon, if not already. We have time for a quick donation. Yes, we do. We have $175 from the old man. Magic wands and bombs are much safer than swords. We don't want anyone to get hurt. Put me down for swordless. We are now only $505 away from the swordless Zelda 1 task. Maybe they uh, were talking about the old man uh, in Viridian City who uh, blocks your path in, in yellow. You can see we're going on to the SSAN here. I gotta continue on with some of the story and getting cut to get into Surge's gym. I would say the same dark art, but I gotta carry you guys into the night here for the, uh, for the special... Pokemon task block. And now we're doing a very, very cool rival fight here. In RTA, you have to use different moves on all of these different Pokemon, but in TAS, it's a four Pokemon long fight, so you know what we want to do. We want to use the Rash and just go through all four of these Pokemon at the same time. And we can use Con Pidgeotto as convenient red bar manipulation. So we want to constantly be staying as deep into Red Bar as we can. So that fight can't any ever any be near that fast in RTA because you would never be able to thrash from the first turn of the fight, relying on critting the thrash to get through. Red Bar has a jingle that's constantly playing during battles if you're under a certain health, and because that jingle is playing, it can't handle loading a bunch of the other, like, audio tracks, and that lack of loading those audio tracks saves time. So, like, if it would need to load a level-up animation, then it's, uh... It just, it can't. It doesn't do it. So you save like two and a half seconds. And if there's like a death cry, that's usually like 0.6 seconds, doesn't load it. So you save. You save that much time in yellow even. And then in red, there's an additional bug with it in like the entering battles. And you also skip the cries of Pokemon as they enter the battle, which is a lot of time. Now, uh, fun fact, we have already manipulated the first can in Surge's Gym, because what happens is, when you leave the SSAN, that counts as entering, uh, ver what's it called? Um, what's the name of the scene? I, I am, so, so, so Vermilion City, right? Yeah, th this is Vermilion City. So, when, when you enter Vermilion City, you trigger the game rolling where the cans are in Surge's Gym. And leaving the SS and causes you to enter Vermilion City, quote-unquote. And so you actually have to manipulate the location of that can from the point of leaving the SS and.
And now you can see our old friend Thrash easily taking out Lieutenant Surge. Another great thing about Pokemon Red Blue is that you can dig out of the fan club where you cannot in yellow. So in, in the yellow tasks where we are digging here, we're going to have to go over to Diglett's cave instead to get back to Cerulean. We need to get back to Cerulean because we need a bike and we need to be able to move on towards Rock Tunnel. You can see us manipulating the movement of the girl there in the house so that we don't lose any frames. No, though I think we actually we may have lost a couple of frames there with the way that that worked out. It was a, that was a little bit too fancy uh, of movement. But now we have a bike and... Nindo King knows its first end game. It's first of the moves that it will end the game with Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt is extremely useful. And we can now cut. Well, we know we, we know we can always it's cut. Uh, we had that since Surge, but we can go into the four turn thrash fight. Now, this, this fight no longer requires you to go through with four turns of thrashing in RTA, but because we have thrash in TAS and can guarantee that it will last four turns and never crit any of the Pokemon. Uh, it is it is quite fast to use on fights like this. And now to the second fight on our way to Rock Tunnel with a Venonat a Weedle and a Caterpie, if I remember correctly. Yes, the Caterpie. In RTA, you typically go to Bubble Beam this Caterpie and then start thrashing because you have the chance of a four-turn thrash. Now, here we can just go straight into thrash because, again, we know whether our thrashes are going to last three or four turns. We know how much damage they're going to do. We know whether they're going to they're going to crit or not. All that stuff is predictable, so we don't have to worry about using any other setup moves. It's about a second faster, Taters. Maybe seventy seconds faster to uh, talk to a trainer instead of being seen by it in Gen One. And now here we would have to repel typically. Now that we are able to actually buy repels, but we don't have to because we can m manipulate with the RNG to never give us an encounter in Rock Tunnel anyway. If you guys are thinking about calling it a night like oh, this is gonna this run's gonna be another hour hold up I, I want you to at least give me another two three minutes here because the most awesome fight of the pokemon blue tass the most unique the most tassy fight of the pokemon blue tass is going to come up in just a couple minutes here you might be thinking, oh, he's just thrashing and thunderbolting things. Well, you're, you're going to see some interesting stuff in a second here. But th this is the Oddish fight, and in RTA, you almost always are very scared on this fight because both the Oddish and Bulbasaur are ranged. We can predict the damage ranges in tests. We know how long the console's been on. We know that where the RNG is. We can make our delays happen and hit our ranges. Thank you. 
Now here it is. Here, here is the fight. Now, we are facing two Geodudes and a Graveler and have no Bubble Beams left because we've used them judiciously to save time on other fights. So we use Thunderbolt. It does not affect Geodude. Geodude uses Self-Destruct. It Gen 1 misses us, but his HP bar instantly disappears because of the use of Self-Destruct. So the fight ends very quickly with the Geodudes and the Graveler. So we are manipulating not only... Well, we're using Thunderbolt against the Pokemon that isn't affected by Thunderbolt. We're then manipulating it to choose to use Self-Destruct because that's a 1 in 4 chance. And then it's Self-Destructing and Gen 1 missing the Self-Destruct, which is a 1 in 256 chance. And then it does that three times in a row. So it's triple Gen 1 miss back to back and the 1 in 4 uh, choice manipulation of the move. So it's like a 1 in a a thousand, twenty-four million. It's all. It's like a one in a billion fight. But even even though it's not as rare as like the Misty fight, the Misty fight actually has more rare RNG uh, combined together. That one's just my favorite because it's it's such a task strat. Like you could go into Misty and Yolo horn attacks and and try to survive. Like sure, <laughs> you could try it. Nobody would ever try intentionally thunderbolting geodudes to make them self-destruct but not kill you. Faders, I think if I saw that from a trainer, I would be like, oh man, I'm, I'm not even mad. I'm impressed. But here, you can see we didn't thrash. Two Pokemon, fight. Two Pokemon, fight. Thrash. Too slow. Thrash has wind-up animation on the first turn. You need it to last four turns to, to re-save like save that time that's lost from the wind-up on the first turn of the battle. Uh, so a two-turn, like a three-turn, it's kind of like, eh. But two, turn, two Pokemon, two turns, you're not thrashing that. You're going to use some other moves to kill the Pokemon. I, I already mentioned that Hard, Harden is not... Harden cannot miss. Harden doesn't have an accuracy check. All right, chat. Let's let's not get too too crazy over the math. We, we still got a lot of a lot of. Um, time left in the night. Another cool strat you're going to see here, though, is buying two Poké Dolls. This is really important in the tassing strategy because we need to be able to fill up our bag so that the uh, enemy, like, gym leaders don't give us items, but we're not getting as many items. Like, RTA runners need to get tons of items to be able to make battles it's easier, like X items, X attack, X special, X speed. We only need to get a couple of X speeds for, a ver for three fights, right? So we don't have nearly as many X items, so we buy duplicates of items like Horn Drill and the Polka, uh, Polka Doll to make up that bag space instead. Now here in Red Blue, you get the bike to the top of this gatehouse, and then this is a cool tr trick I found actually from Tassing that I benefited the RTA community. Uh, I gave them over this trick. It is actually faster to bike from leaving the house to the fly house than to walk. And now we teach our horn drill. And fly. And fly to lavender.
So now we get to start seeing the benefit of having horn drill, right? We, up to this point, did not have a one-hit KO move. In RTA runs, they use horn drill in combination with X accuracy to remove the accuracy check on horn drill. So it goes from 30% accurate to 100% accurate. In TAS, we don't have to worry about accuracy anyway. So we don't need to get X accuracy. We just straight up can use horn drill. And then for the end of the fight, we switch to using thrash because we, we want to save our horn drills for some reasons, but also it's, it's just faster to thrash those last couple of Pokemon. All right. Another great addition we, you just saw there in the Channeler fight is that you can go straight to Thunderbolt crits. In RTA, sometimes we do this thing called Rock Slide Skip to try to like YOLO a run and save time. It's not YOLOing if you're TAS. You can just use Thunderbolt and force it to crit because you're the TAS. So you're gonna see that again here, where, oh, oh, oh right. Or you're not gonna see that here because we don't have red bar. We went to the heel pad instead of going around the heel pad. There are ways to go around the heel pad, fighting optional trainers. That's slow. We don't wanna fight optional trainers. We wanna take the heel pad and then get red bar back by intentionally thrashing Ghastly four times to get hit by Nightshade four times to get red bar back. One of one of my signatures on and another one of my that's like second favorite fight because it's again like you would never do that you would never thrash a ghastly intentionally as a human runner. But we need to get red bar back and and there's just there's no other ways i've looked into a lot of ways to get red bar back and that is the fastest way uh it, red bar is so powerful in red blue that you want to get it back like literally instantly if you wait even a couple of battles like onto the there's a drowsy you could potentially get red bar back from up at the top of the tower and at, even at that point you you've already lost like 30 seconds to not having red bar and it only it only takes like 18 seconds of delay to do all of that repeated like thrashing and getting confused and taking all the nightshades so it's actually a, a over it like it, it even in the immediate it's like it, it looks kind of slow doing it in that fight but even like within that fight it's already saving a lot of the time back from getting back into red bar So the the reason that the fight ends up working when you when you thrash the ghastly is that you you're confused at the end and you use a thunderbolt. Like you don't get stuck thrashing forever. You go into this confused state eventually and when you go when you get confused, you uh can switch you can select a move again and then you can thunderbolt the final uh Pokémon. And then yeah, you can this is an RTA thing. Uh, sorry, I didn't, I didn't explain that, but it, it's an RTA thing, too. You can use a Polka Doll in the Marowak and Lavender Tower, and you don't have to have a self scope. Super common in all the glitchless Pokemon speedruns, but also used in the TAS here.
so much thrashing. This is like a great fight, uh, task wise, because human runners need to set up a, like a bunch of different moves in succession to beat all of these Pokemon the fa fastest way. But the task is like, ooh, a four Pokemon fight. I know what we're gonna use. Just gonna thrash everything. Irish Gangsta 54, yes! You nailed it. I am uh, the calculator. I, I, I refer uh, I refer to my stream fans as the calculator. My my fandom. So like when when some, whenever somebody joins, follows the stream, we get the welcome to the calculator uh, sign off. I should use that one when we do the next glitchless run. And now, moving on, we are going to be going to the Safari Zone, which is very useful because we need to get Strength and we need to get uh, Surf. And we need to get those items now because we want to get our bag full before the next gym. Just conveniently, it works out that after Surge, which you get the last like useful TM, well, at least the last useful one for RTA. The eighth gym's TM's gonna be pretty useful for TAS too, but uh, we'll we'll get there. Anyway, um, for like gyms four through seven, you don't want the TM's from the gym leaders, so it just works out perfectly that we can fill up our bag for gym four. Oh, and another uh, very interesting uh, TAS strat here is left cycling road because TAS doesn't need to get any rare candies it's able to go down the left side of Cycling Road instead of the right side, and then it's able to pick up a hidden max elixir that is uh, in the center area. It's, there, there's no like time lost to getting this max elixir. Um, it, it's also kind of difficult to get as a human. It, like the, the press timing to get it is really uh, specific. Uh, human speedrunners usually get the polka flute in right around the hour mark, and we get it like ten minutes. Like, like I said, we're we're not really like saving that much spread anymore from RTA to to TAS. We're gonna end up about sixteen minutes ahead of RTA runs by the end, uh, and we're sitting at like this ten to twelve minute spread for, and it's gonna just slowly like add a minute here and there for the next couple of gym leaders and the the E four. Well, Dark Art, really, because this this is like just one giant manip, right? From the start of the console being powered on. So it, it's you could really say that it's not possible at all as a, a human. But um, really, humans humans can only really do like encounter-based manipulations. The battle manipulations are all impossible. Or at least very close to impossible for humans to do. There's been like one or two attempts at doing in-battle RNG manipulations. Yeah, Audrey, there was a source code leak for the game a while back. And in the source code leak, they had marked it as like a, a not a bug, but it was am kind of ambiguous with the way that the Japanese was written because it could be like a won't fix type error. Like it's a bug, but we're not going to fix it. Or you could also in have read it as saying that it's that it's not a bug. But they, they the developers knew about it at the time of the release of the game from internal testing. And now we are going to go to Koga's Gym. In RTA, you would not be going to Koga's Gym this early, but in TAS, we can rush there because it is super, super uh, useful to get Koga's um, badge boost for speed in TAS. Another great Tass only thing here is thrashing these drowsies at level 33. In RTA, you need to be level 40 to thrash them consistently.
This is another great fight. Uh, one of the dangerous ones for RTA runners, but Tass can actually use it for uh, for its own purposes quite easily, quite effectively. Just getting those YOLO drills. Oh, I remember why I was a little bit confused thinking of what happened in this fight. In the first pass of this task I did, we did, weren't able to drill the Hypno, but in this second uh, iteration of the task, we're able to drill both of those Pokemon, and I rearranged some of the fighting here on Koga so they can drill everything that we need to. And we're going to see a little, uh, a little return of the old Gen 1 Miss Self-Destruct strat. So now here on Weezing, typically in RTA runs, you want to die to the Weezing so you get the lowest red bar possible. But in the TAS, we're actually so under-leveled from having fought uh, like as few uh, trainers as possible and also from um, not using any rare candies that we need the experience from Weezing very badly. So we get it to Gen 1 miss its self-destruct so that we will still get its experience at the end of the battle. And we use a different fight to manipulate our HP for Red Bar. Now here, we flew to Pallet Town next because we want to rush the mansion. RTA runners can't rush the mansion this quickly because they need to be a higher level when they're walking through it to avoid all the encounters. Repels do not work unless you also have a Pokemon that is higher level than all the Pokemon you're trying to avoid. So you need to be both out-leveling things and you need to be on the Repel in Gen 1. And you can see us now in the mansion going on. Another great thing about us going to the mansion early. So, like, the reason why you avoid it doing early in RTA is because of that leveling issue. But you want to go there early because it has Blizzard. The Blizzard TM is in the mansion. So we can get that as part of our endgame moveset on our walkthrough. And also help with filling up our bag. Though I don't remember if I actually end up getting Blizzard. I don't know if we get Blizzard in the blue clip. Am I am I talking nonsense? I am. The Tass doesn't even need the Blizzard. It just goes here to fill up its bag faster. <laughs> And so we can fly back to Cinnabar whenever. It's also like kind of swag that you can go here so early. <laughs> And we are out. Once again, you can see we are not using the Celadon Waypoint uh, like the RTA runs do. RTA runs will center in Celadon. We can't do that because it would remove our red bar. We, we need red bar too badly to afford centering ever. And we got our lemonade or fresh water probably at the top of the mart, the Celadon mart. And now we're going through self. And you thought, uh, 
you thought l late EQ was cool in RTA, getting e Earthquake after fighting Giovanni. This is going to be no Earthquake. We are going to completely skip. Completely skip getting Earthquake. It's actually all the way back in Cerulean still. Our, our uh, dig or escape rope in this case. Waypoint. Arbok, super free in TAS, super annoying in RTA. Any any move combination takes at least two turns. In RTA, in TAS, you can just YOLO drill it, and it will always take one turn. And now we have our card key. Bingo! Another great use of quick attack to be able to take damage without losing any turns. And now we are at 7 HP deep into red bar again and using some moves to avoid reducing our horn drill count too much. Thunderbolt crit being very powerful. We do need to drill Alakazam. Huang, bro, why did we walk one tile up after the heel pad? Or the warp pad? I exactly as Audrey said. To avoid having the rival walk all the way around you. And that is a strat that the RTA runners can use just as well. Don't need Lapras, because we have Squirtle from the beginning of the game. And luckily, we still have Bubble Beam. Do need to drill Drowsy. But Bubble Beam doesn't even need to crit to kill Marowak. And we are on... To the Giovanni fight. Oh, not at all. <laughs> Huang, the, the money is like, you, you just have tons of it extra. Um, it's it's kind of tight at like the escape rope buy, maybe. But the by the time you're at the Celadon shop, like... You buy duplicates of the Horn Drill and Polka Doll TMs, and you buy three X Speeds. <laughs> so, nothing too crazy with the shop. And there's our last drill to make it. You have time for a couple of donations? Oh, sure, go ahead. We are at thirteen dollars and thirteen cents donation from Apocalypsis. Nami has received thirteen point three seven pixels. A five dollar donation from the boot racks. Task giving hype. Awesome. How are we doing on that Jerry incentive? And we are back on the bicycle. We still need $183 for the Jerians. We also oh need... man, all these donations coming in, but they're, they're skipping the incentive. 
and just under $500 for this Elder One Sword. Remember guys, if you get $180 in towards the donation by the time of the start or end or whatever, I don't really care, of one of the yellow runs, I will show my new dog Jerry live on stream from Scenic Holland, Michigan. Really tough decision between Doggo and Sorkis. <laughs> One of the um, annoying things about red, blue versus yellow is the length of this series of Blaine questions. It is one of the few things that is slower in red, blue, and it's because in yellow they stopped teaching you how to do the questions every single time you went to one of the questions. So for the Blaine fight here, one of the cool things is that you don't need Growlithe to even worry about using agility or Blaine using Super Potion, because we don't need any setup on Blaine, unlike the RTA runs. We can go straight into bubble beaming the first two of Blaine's Pokemon, and then we can drill Rapidash. And you can see how he said to make room for our TM. We, we are now full bag blocking out TMs from the gym leaders, saving quite a bit of time. And you can see here how there's a little bit of annoyance having to fly to Celadon manually from never having centered here, but gotta, gotta keep it that way to avoid ever losing our red bar. Our precious red bar. So one of the main differences, I think, between the uh, yellow and red-blue glitchless tasses, in terms of the overall routing of the gyms. Because one of the cool things about Gem 1 Pokemon is that the mid-game has this gym gauntlet that you can really do in any order you want as long as you end up last at Giovanni. <laughs> Executes really annoying. He, you know, nothing really works on him very well, so we can just drill him. Erica's a unique fight for tasks compared to the RTA runs because Erica you can thrash in tasks. And we still have Thrash and Tass because we never did EQ. Doing no EQ instead of late EQ. Wiggly woo! And now we are back in Saffron for the Sabrina fight. Mm -hmm. 
Sabrina Fight is one of the great ones for Pokemon Tassing. Let's see the Thrash coming out here. Thrash is just so useful in Pokemon Gen 1 Tassing. We can use it so deep into the endgame. With all of these four Pokemon gym leader fights. And now look at look at this exact 26 damage Psywave. Psywave can do anywhere between Alakazam's level and 50% more than Alakazam. Oh, sorry. Uh, one and 50% more than Alakazam's level. So one and 1.5 times Alakazam's level. That range it gives us a lot of different things that could be manipulated. We can manipulate exactly 26 damage to his to 1 HP, and now we will never have to worry about our red bar until we get to Agatha. Even though right now we are still only at Sabrina. Venom off my favorite second time. <laughs> Black belt fight right here. This is a very, very complicated one for RTA runners. You gotta save often to avoid getting uh, your red bar taken away from you, tragically. But here for the tasks, we can completely avoid any worries and sit at 1 HP going straight into Thunderbolt crits. Yeah! There's some great GBI shades of blue. Now we exit and re-enter Giovanni's gym to reset the position of the trainers, and we can go straight to Giovanni, only having fought those two trainers there and not doing any of the warp puzzles. And now the Giovanni fight. RTA Giovanni fight is actually quite easy. Um, Task Giovanni fight just gets the benefit from not having to worry about Gen 1 missing. <laughs> and now we have used items specifically to open up space in our bag so that we will actually get Giovanni's TM. Unlike what RTA runs would do, they they don't want Giovanni's TM, they already have Earthquake. We need Fissure because we need a ground-based move to be able to affect Agatha's Gengars and Haunter. And one-hit KO them. And there's Teaching Fissure, and now we're on the bike.
And it's the Viridian rival fight. And just for reference, guys, we are at an hour and 15 minutes into the run, and we are still on the same from live, live from the console playback of this run. This run is lasting very consistently. The, the playback of these Gen 1 tasks on console is extremely consistent due to the work on Game Boy Interface from Extremes and a whole host of people in the emulation accuracy scene. Um, myself, Casual Poke Player, Enter Pinter, uh, the Bomb Stew, String Flow, uh, the original guy, Cinemos, who created uh, Gambate, um, who doesn't really exist, <laughs> uh, doesn't really hang around much. We, we all work together, though, and uh, we've built Gambate Speedrun, one of the most accurate emulators of any system that I'm aware of, verified by thousands of test ROMs and the host of, like, 20 tasks that we're able to verify. More, probably even more than 20 now. Maybe 25 or 30, even. We verified on original cartridges using the Game Boy Player. So that's why we're able to last so deep into these tasks is, is that the even though we're looking at billions and billions of cpu instructions the length of every one of those instructions and their effect on the number of frames that are being processed by the game has uh has all been predicted exactly Yep, yeah, and still a little bit more to go here. Now, uh, coming up here in the uh, Victory Road, in the Victory Road segment here, we're going to have some boulder pushing. But we're not just going to have any boulder pushing. We're going to have what I like to call swag boulder. And it it, lose, it does lose two frames. Okay, I'm, I'm going to get this out of the way. It loses two frames. It's It's swag. Yeah, Audrey, we, we've made uh, Gambate now accurate enough that it, it's um, it's perfectly precise for a bunch of games other than the Pokemon games now, too. And so if you task basically any Game Boy game on the Gambate emulator, except for a, a very small hand few, ha handful, um, they can be played back on the console. Um, but yeah, you're going to see potentially some swag bouldering here, and it loses two frames, and it's where... You push the boulder, but then look away really quickly after pushing the boulder, and the dust uh, cloud goes in a different direction. Hey, look at that. Now we got strength activated again, and we're just continuing the boulder pushing. This is very similar to RTA all, except that we don't have to worry about repelling. Because we can just continue watching where the state of the RNG is and using A presses or different, uh, slightly different patterns of movement to avoid the encounters. I, I did see, I, I did hear about the whole fish plays Pokemon thing. Yeah, it's almost like anything that would delay the overworld loop makes it start up again in another two frames. Now, this is one of my favorite, favorite parts of the run here. The double menu use to both use strength and then get on the bike and use elixir. 
I, I just love that uh, series of menuing. It's very precise from the past. Yeah, there was something about that Wego Giant, the fish randomly pushing boulders in the braille puzzle for the Reggies. Swag PC! Fun fact, not only can you swag the boulders, you can swag using PCs. Uh, Pudpo. Fun fact, there actually was a benefit to doing it sometimes. Because it causes the two frames of delay, we can use it as part of our manipulation system. It's like one of the variations we can use to change RNG and not get any encounters. <laughs> Brothers XV. It's always hitting because this is a TAS. This is a tool-assisted speedrun of Pokemon Blue, live from a console, and we know when everything is going to happen from the startup of the console, and can persist every, press every single button at exactly the time we want to for the RNG to roll or drill hitting. Also, I am not Dwango AC. For anybody in chat who's confused, I am fake Dwango. I'm Tycoon83. And Lorelei is down at the 1 hour and 22 minute mark. So luckily we still have that bubble beam, we can use that to take out Onyx. Thunderbolt will deal with Hitmonchan just fine. And Hitmonlee. And we can drill my champ. And we have the Agatha battle now. We've it's been so long. It's been all the way since Sabrina since we've had to take any damage. And we're, and we're still not taking damage. Using that great fissure we got from Giovanni to be able to affect Agatha's Pokemon, like was mentioned. And down goes Arbok. And now our PP is back full again, We're using that max elixir we got over on Cycling Road. Now, an RTA thing you almost always have to worry about on Lance is the Hydro Pump. You need to be at around 129 HP or higher to not die to Giardos' Hydro Pump. And we don't have to worry about that because we can just Thunderbolt crit right away. 
Yay, manipulating crits. We can also fissure the Dragonairs. Manipulate sun, uh, Supersonic Fail from Aerodactyl, because he does need to take a turn. And now we're going to go to the champion fight. Hold on just a second, guys. And we're just going to finish off the champion fight here with more combinations of drilling and fissuring. And a bubble beam to take out Rhydon. Even, even Rhydon with the four times effective bubble beam can be taken out. <laughs> Down goes Arcanine, and we're so close. Just the Venusaur. We gotta get one more drill. It's done. You saw it here. We have taken out the entire Elite Four, the champion, everything. Live from Pokemon Blue on a console. And I'm going to let this play for a sec, and I'm going to throw it back to Freya, and I'm going to take care of Doggo so we can get through to the Pokemon Yellow runs. <laughs> 